Hello and welcome back to the another video of Microsoft Azure Services. In last video, we have seen that how can we send email using Azure Graph API with Python. And we have also seen how can we enable Azure Services and register a new tenant. In this video, we are going to see how can we use Microsoft Azure Graph API to read email from our mailbox. So before we perform any operation using Microsoft Graph API, we have to go through three different three important steps. So right now you can see these steps on your screen. The first step is that register a application in Azure portal. And the second step is that assign permission to the tenant. And after that, we have to go through the Graph API documentation. So we have covered all of these steps in our last video. If you have not seen the last video, you can find the link in description. As you know that one like is very big motivation for any YouTube channel. So if you like the content of this video, please hit the like button. And do not forget to share your feedback in comments. Subscribe to the channel for more videos on cloud platforms and Python. So let's start the video now. All right, so I will go to my PyCharm project folder. So here we have used this project to send email in our last video. Now I will just open this main file. And I will add new python file read email using graph api if you have not seen last video we have created two functions one was to send the email and one was to generate the token you can see till here we are generating the token and returning the token so we can use same code we don't have to write a new code because our client id client secret and tenant id will remain same all right so i will use this code from here you can see the entire code on your screen so these are the credentials that we have noticed in last video and then we have used these details in payloads and then we have generated the access token so this line will return the entire json and then from that json we will take one object that is access token and then we are returning that object so if you want to see if the token is getting generated or not we can just call this function once just for testing i will run this So you can see this is our token. And let's say if you want to see the details using token. So I have explained this in last video also. Like if you want to see if the token is coming for correct account or not. And you are using multiple accounts. So there is a link. JWT.ms. When you will open this JWT.ms. You can enter your token here and then down you can see all the details which account this belongs to what are the access given okay so this is very important part i just wanted to explain in all the videos that you can use the token to understand your details from where this token is coming and which all are the access given to the user so it will be very helpful if you are getting any error all right so now let's go back to the python code now we have to create another method to read the email using this token so here i have created a method to read email and we are using these headers the token that we have generated here we are using the same token we are calling the function here and assigning the value to one variable and then we are using that value to our api call okay so now next is the callback url so this is our callback url that you can see in the last so on the only change is the last part so if you can see here so when we were sending the email that time we have used same email send email and here we are using just messages 
and in last video we have used post method and this time we have to use get method so we have to get the data of all the emails which are there in our mailbox using graph api and then we will from line number 34 till line number 42 you can see i have to import this json Okay, so if the response is response dot status code is equals to 200 that means that we have successfully we are able to successfully read the data from our mailbox and then we will get the entire dump so in the entire dump we will get the data of 10 emails by default if you have to change the count you can see the documentation so you can refer through this page if you want to change the count or you want to so let's say you can see here how can you change the count using the top keyword so i will just give you the example also and i will do another video where i will tell multiple filter criteria shorting filter by user filter by count so but you can refer this document so if you will come down here so this is the keyword to filter and we use all the filters after dollar sign so if you come here you can see few examples you can see one example here after messages there is a question mark and there is a dollar sign that is used and then you can just select the sender and subject same way for count if you want to filter by count what you have to do is just at this part underscore top thousand but right now i will go with default value so i will just not delete this one for your reference i will use the default so by default it will select first 10 emails you must have seen on this microsoft document also so I will search for count again. And if you want to skip, so you can see the default page size is 10 messages. Okay. So let's move forward and run and see if we are able to get all of the 10 emails. So before that, what I will show you is i will log into my gmail account and just for testing i have sent these two emails and there are few more emails i have we don't need to call this here now we, it was just for demonstration and it is called here i will call this function read email and access token is inside read email so it will be automatically called Now I will run. So you see, we have got this output. If is read through, yes, we have already read the email. Is in the draft? It is false. No, it is not in the draft. And then you can see all of these values. But mainly, what we need is mostly from emails. We need who has sent, when it was created. So all of these de details are available here. You can extract any data and uh, let's go on the top from email and to email. You have to deserialize this JSON and it is a two level of deserialization if you want to get from. So first you have to deserialize and then you will get this from object details. After you will get from object, then inside from object, you have to deserialize the JSON for one more label. Then you will get who has sent it and what is the name of the sender. Then, all right, so uh, I will just show you the example how can you straightforward 
get flow of the object where we don't have to do much work so what i will do i will just disable these two lines because we don't want to see the entire data all together now and we want to see few of the specific values so what i have done is so if you see line number 44 till line number 49 now i have created an array from the json output using this get value and after creating the array we are able to decentralize the json and decentralizing json is to get the required values from json so what we are doing after decentralizing it we are selecting subject what is the male subject as i just mentioned that to get the from details we need two level of decentralization so first of all we are just decentralizing to get the first level that is from and second one we are decentralizing to get the email address so two level of decentralization is happening here to get the email address and the name so if you will write sender name it will give you the data of sender name you have already seen the output okay. and now the mail body finally so you will get the email body here i have just kept this separation so that when you are looking at this screen you can easily understand from where the data of next email is starting okay i will show the entire code once again so i will just run this now and let's see if we are able to successfully if we are able to successfully get the required details so you can see we are able to get all the required details so these are the two latest email that we have just seen few minutes back you can go back in the video and see and you can go back in the video and Okay, so just to connect again, what I will do is I will enable these lines. Dump line. So if you want to see this. So here goes the entire dump data main point that you might get some difficulty is that this form address so rest all everything that is there down subject and everything is the single 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 level of json but here it is two level of json so you can connect this with line number 47 Alright, so in next video, we will see how can we filter the email when we are reading the mailbox using different criteria and you go through this documentation for better knowledge. You will get all the filter criteria and maybe you will get some examples also. So let's have a look on the entire code once again. Till line number 22, till line number 21, we are reading the JSON and these are our credentials. You can see the last video how can you get these credentials from Azure portal. And here we have I have given you the format of the URL. The second URL is just for example how can you run filters. And here in line number 34 we are just getting the response after passing our headers. Okay, and in this we are getting the dump. Here we are looping on the array of all the JSON object and getting the required details from email item. All right, and if we get error, we will you get all of these messages. Finally, we are calling the function here. I hope you like the video and video is used. I hope you like the content of this video. In next video, we will see how can we go through each email in the mailbox and how can we download attachments on a path. I will see you in the next video. Thank you.